Hi, I'm Mario Guerra, former mayor of the great city of Downey, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Pierce, the editor of the Downey Patriot. And you're listening, you're watching Talking Downey with Mario and Eric. Mario? I'm doing great, thank you. Uh, you know, we have a good show today. Uh, we're recording this on a Friday, and we're, today we're going to recap uh, the city council meeting. This is actually something that I've been wanting to do on a regular basis, right. uh, because, you know, not everybody has time to watch the city council meeting, so I thought maybe we can recap, kind of break it down, uh, do a little, I'm more of a reporting kind of person, and you can offer the analysis, we can kind of share some feedback. Uh, we had a very eventful. Am, am I going to be? I'm going to be. You're going to be a Joe Buck, and I'm going to be the Troy Aikman. Is go. that it? Don't, no. call <laughs> Don't call me Joe Buck. I didn't know. You were uh, that. No, I'm not a fan of Joe Buck. <laughs> uh, so no. So we, we did have an important council meeting uh, Tuesday. I want to start with, with with a topic that you've been very vocal about, uh, which is the roundabout, the traffic circle over on Reeves and Quill. Uh, the city council decided Tuesday to just end that experiment. Yeah. Are you happy about that? It's about time, okay? Our former council member there for that district on his way out uh, decided because he had heard at some seminar we needed roundabouts, so he put it on the agenda. The council voted for $100,000 to spend on reviewing how to make that happen. So final report comes back to the council. It was going to be forty or fifty thousand dollars more just to practice it, mm -hmm. and potentially four to five hundred thousand dollars more to do it. If you've ever been to that corner, residents of southeast uh, Southwest Downey know. Try to get right next to uh, Apollo Park and the senior and, center. And, and the senior center. So it's like the worst location in the entire city. It's very small. A lot of kids crossing from Rancho to Apollo Park. It was silly. And dangerous. Yeah. So yes, I'm glad they stopped. The common sense prevail. I don't, I don't how, understand the why. Like why of all the intersections? I'm trying to think. You know, maybe even Brookshire, Cherokee. That gets kind of crazy sometimes. Quill and Reeves. I've never seen a traffic jam there. Yeah. I've never seen a, never. a need for that. No. As a matter of fact, when I was uh, when I was mayor. We they didn't have crosswalks there, mm -hmm. so one day it actually it came from a resident telling us and showing us, and sure enough, I walk there all the mm -hmm. time. So we put crosswalks in mm -hmm. officially instead of just the stop sign mm -hmm. without crosswalks. Um, but yeah, it didn't make any sense. I think it you know sometimes you adhere to the wishes of a local representative. You know, yeah. like LA City, each, each council member is like their own little kingdom on there. Right. We're not so bad here in Downey. But I think, you know, Sean Ashton came back from a contract cities uh, or, or one of those seminars and thought this was a great idea. So originally we were going to put it on Brookshire yeah. in Cherokee. And then I think the council people said, we don't want it there. Right. Why don't you put it in your own district? So he did, which is a terrible it's place. It's crazy. It's, you it's know, probably, it's, if you had to look for a, ter a worse location, it couldn't be worse. No, no. You have this in your center. You have, you know, little old people walking around. You're right by, by a ranch show. You have people in wheelchairs. You also have yeah. students. It's the worst possible location. And the worst part is the city has already spent a significant amount of money yeah. getting up to this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's, it's amazing on there. Which, you know, this whole thing leads us to the second part of what happened at the council meeting. One of the things this council decided was how to put things on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I think that's how this roundabout got in trouble in the yeah. first place, by how it got put on the agenda. But you wanna, you wanna mention that? Yeah, you know, since, since you brought that up, it, it was very interesting. So, so Mayor Pro Tem, Catherine Alvarez, uh, was very vocal Tuesday, and she actually made some very serious allegations against uh, the city attorney and a couple of council members. And the city manager. And the, the, the city manager. Uh, she said that her, her rights were violated because she wasn't able to put a, a rent control ordinance onto the agenda. Um, can, can you explain what, what's going on? So, first of all, she didn't write that because she's quoting verse and chapter in the Brown Act. Uh, that was probably that Rudolfo guy that we know that writes this stuff for her. Um, but she was quoting the Brown Act, and the Brown Act says that you have a right to put things on the agenda. It doesn't say it has to be on the agenda. You can request on there, it says request. By the way, everybody keeps bringing up the Brown Act. She brings it up at every council meeting. 
The Brown Act is to keep from making uh, backdoor deals. The Brown Act, the enforcement of a Brown Act violation is to undo it. Okay? Nobody's ever really gotten in trouble for a Brown Act violation in the state of California. It's been around for 30 some odd years. So you should adhere to it. It's basically uh, not having insider backroom deals. Okay? So, so, city can, so, so basically under the Brown Act, the city council can't meet privately together. A, ma a majority. A majority. Three. Right. So for example, there's five on the city council. You and I are two. Uh, but you and I can meet. You and I can talk. Hey, Eric, we want to vote on this. Right. Eric, why don't we do this? On the Mario, why don't we do this? And so forth. So you and I can. Mm -hmm. Now, the Brown Act violation, if we go one more, right. it's like I wink wink at you, hey, maybe you tell Claudia, mm -hmm. maybe I'll tell Blanca, maybe right. you tell Trujillo. Once you get the third person now involved, that's a Brown right. Act violation. Now, here's the key. That does not that does not take you away from talking about the city together. Mm -hmm. The five council people or whatever can be at a, events together, can be sitting there, can, can talk about, wow, we should, you know, it'd be nice to, to get more police uh, right. presence or get more of this. That's not a Brown Act violation because you're not voting anything. Mm -hmm. What happens is once it's brought up to a vote mm -hmm. on there, if three of you have discussed that agenda item, that's when it becomes That's when you get in trouble. That's when you get in trouble on it. Absolutely. So for her, it cheapens the Brown Act when she keeps bringing it up, and there's really no violation of it. Her big thing was she wanted to bring last meeting rent control, um, Bell Garden style, which mm -hmm. is the worst rent control ordinance in the state of California, just passed mm -hmm. last month, to, to bring it to Downey. Mm -hmm. So what happens is none of the other council people said they wanted to vote on it. They, right. This has been a dead issue in Downey now right. last year and the year before that. By the way, for anybody that knows, rent control is alive and well in the city of Downey and in the entire state of California. The state of California has a 5% uh, increase on the rent control for the entire state and then a cost of living index, but it, no matter what, it can't be more than 10%. The cost of living in most cities have been in the past 2 or 3%. Mm -hmm. Bell Gardens caps it out at 3%. And it restricts who you can sell your house to, how you can do it, and it also creates a rent ordinance board that costs a million and a half dollars a year to oversee and, and go to and so forth instead of you know letting the market dictate. We already have that law. So Catherine wanted to bring it to the council to vote on that. Mm -hmm. None of the other councils seconded it, or none of the other councils wanted to. It died because no, there's no interest. City manager brings that up and says, listen, I want to know how you guys as a council want me to put things on the agenda. Because I don't work for one of you, I work for all of you. Right. So Catherine took exception to that, and then the rest of the council said, okay, well, let's make an ordinance mm -hmm. that if a second council is willing to say, okay, I want to hear it, then right. you put it on the agenda. We've always had that. We right. had that with Jerry Caden, we had that with Gilbert Levis. They weren't going to do whatever Mario said and spend half time, which is the most exp expensive thing. Mm -hmm. When you put something on the agenda, you got legal, you got staff, you got a review, you got to give it options, you got to bring look at all the other cities. Mm -hmm. It costs a lot of money every time you put something on the agenda. So all the city manager was saying, "Hey, can I just get a you know? Does somebody else on the council mm -hmm. want to talk about it besides one person?" Because so so here's the thing. So you have a five member city council, and and, and Catherine Alvarez wants to. She wants to bring Bell Gardens more strict rent control into the city of Downey. And so she's trying to place it on the agenda. By doing that, like you said, it would take a lot of staff time to, re to do the research, to write up the reports, and to, and to present to the city council. There's no point in doing that when she's the only member of the city council who supports it. Right now, she's one out of five. It doesn't make sense to do to waste all that time right. for something that has zero chance of, right. of, of passing. But but what from what I understand, she pushed it so much this last meeting that uh, Councilman Trujillo said, "Okay, you want us just to look at the Bell Gardens? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, bring it to us and, and we'll look at it." So next meeting is going to be the agenda. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent guarantee you that Catherine Alvarez is going to have a whole bunch of advocates mm -hmm. here from Bell Gardens or from her. Uh, her, tenancy you know, her tenancy union and, and so forth, they're going to be there trying to lobby for it. So I feel bad for the poor council people because, you know, they have to listen to this again when they've already kind of made their decision. 
There's no nothing new or different here. Uh, you know, Downey has rent control. It already has it. So to make it more restrictive, I think is going to penalize the property owners here. We don't have any issues except when Catherine Alvarez brings up or right. thinks she does. So I, I'm reading between the lines a little bit, and you know, when when I hear a council member accuse the city manager and other people of violating her rights, discrimination and discrimination and bullying. I, I'm, I'm kind of reading between the lines that she could potentially be setting herself up for some sort of legal action. I'm just kind of, um, I'm, I, I don't know that for sure. That's just kind of my, my analysis of, of what I'm seeing. Eric, know. she's done that before to other council members and the city had to spend money investigating it on there and exonerating council members on there. So she's done that in the last year. Mm -hmm. She has cost the city so much money in the last year. But anyways, bottom line, you're right. Discrimination, I think the word was bullying, uh, Brown Act violations, she's quoting in the whole thing. It was a crazy situation for a council member to keep bringing that up. And, you know, again, I'm sorry, I'm biased, but I'm embarrassed that her title is Mayor Pro Tem. Mm. So, and now check this out. The scary thing is when Blanca Pacheco has to resign on December the 5th or something, for the next meeting when you have the swearing in of the two new council members for District 4 and 2, does she, does she have to preside over it as mm. acting mayor? This, it, yeah, I, I don't know, but yeah, if I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, right. I don't want to get around. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get, get around that. That's a whole other <laughs> episode. Uh, city council meeting. The the other uh, notable item that stood out to me is the city council voted to give the Downey Rose Float uh, thirty thousand uh, dollars. The Rose Float has struggled the past two years right. um, in fundraising because of the pandemic. They right. haven't been able to hold to hold their Miss Downey pageant. Uh, they haven't been able to hold their parade of winners. Right. Uh, they're two largest fundraisers. So they, you know, and everybody loves the Rose Float. Right. Uh, so the city council, you know, is giving them $30,000. Um, we don't know yet if it's going to be on an annual basis, but at least for this year, uh, they're, they're getting that, that money. When you were on the city council, Mario, did did you guys ever do anything like this? Did you have people request the money from you? They, they never had. We used to give, I think, $5,000 a year. Um, and, and, you know, it's very supportive. My only question is, I think we should have done it a couple years ago, when the first year of the pandemic and then the second year of the pandemic, because mm -hmm. that's the years they had it. I, I don't know what the no, what the right answer is. I'm I'm good that they're helping it out. Uh, I don't know if that's the right number. If that's per, you know perpetuality or perpetuality. It's not even word perpetuality. Forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't forget. That's, that English is my second yeah. language, right? Um, so I don't know what yeah. what the answer is, but I'm glad. You know, uh, again, every January first, the city of Downey. You know, one year it's towards the beginning of the parade, and the next year it's towards the end. Uh, it's it, it's what makes us proud. It's a self-built flow. There's all these dedicated people that are down there. Right. So I'm glad we we need to help it. I don't know what the right amount is. Is thirty thousand? Should it be forty thousand? Should it be twenty thousand? Right. And what we do going forward. But I'm okay. I kind of wish we would have done something a couple of years ago. The last two years. Right. So we have helped a little bit. I think we. I think we now escort it up there, and I think that's the police department. So right. we give them in kind kind of things, right. but not not re ever really cash. No, no, no. You rode in the parade. I did. Did you, was it? I did. I, I don't. I know it gets. I don't know if it was cold when you when you rode it, but it's super early in the morning. Um, did you enjoy it? I did. It was it was a fantastic experience. They treated me really well. Not only the rose flow. Uh, I was mayor. Uh, my first time as mayor. Uh, and they were nice. They put me on a piano, so I got to sit the whole time. Yeah. And we wore this tuxedo. Did, did, you, did you wave? I did wave. I got in trouble a couple of times because I didn't know. But it was really, it was awesome experience. Um, it goes on for a long time. Yeah. You turn the corner, and then all of a sudden you see the stands, and you're uh -huh. there, and you're like waving, and then the stand finishes, and you're like, okay. And then all of a sudden there's another big stand. Yeah. But it's like seven miles. Do you know when you're on TV? Uh, yeah, well, we got the only year we were on for only a few seconds yeah. because the uh, stealth bomber was late 
and we were like the third thing, we were in the front of it. Uh -huh. So when it was our turn and we were turning, we were going to be on TV, the stealth bomber flies uh -huh. over so the cameras go to it. Right. So we got very short TV chat, uh, time on there. It was still a great experience. So I, I'll give everybody an inside baseball here. So you, you're you in that thing and you don't get to go to the bathroom for uh -huh. seven miles and you're going uh -huh. real slow. So. You know, plan accordingly, number one. Number two, another float uh, broke down in front of us. So at certain parts of the, of the parade, you're there, and the people are, you know, five feet away. Mm -hmm. So you're just stopped. I'm, hi, how are mm -hmm. you? You start talking on there. Yeah. And then some of the young ladies and the, and the kids on there, hey, can you give me a flower? So there's a million flowers all the uh -huh. way around you and stuff like that. So sure. So I take a flower and I throw it and somebody else wants one. Oh yeah, okay, sure. So you throw a flower and there comes the little person in the little scooter dressed yeah. in white with the whole yeah. thing. You think I committed a sin. Oh, it was yeah. like, I'm going to hell for mm -hmm. this and I'm going to jail, both. Mm -hmm. So you can't do that the whole thing and we're gonna write up your, you know, your yeah. association. And I was like, yeah, but you almost got them banned from the rose. Parade. Yeah, yeah, just for throwing. I just was being the goodwill yeah. gesture. I mean, yeah. I could literally hand it out. I wasn't right. throwing out because you're right. It would be a, yeah. Anyway, but after the parade, they tow it back to Downey. They put they yeah. always put it for the embassy suite. Yeah. They sell those flowers. Yeah, I know. That's their so I gave away ten dollars worth of flowers. <laughs> but anyway, great experience. Yeah. I'd love to do it again someday. It was when I was mayor. I actually entered a contest. And you know, and so forth on there, yeah. and it was expensive ticket. I helped it. I helped it with some good fundraising that year yeah. too. And but it was all good. All it's good. funny you you've written in it. Um, Alex Dominguez, staff writer for the Johnny Patriot, wrote yeah. in it. I know a few people who have written it. Yeah, in. I've hosted the, the Miss Downey pageant, which was um, actually a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, hosting it. Uh, my biggest fear was mispronouncing the names. Yeah, the funny part is I, I hosted the last. Miss Downey pageant, which was like now like three years ago, and it's the same girls because they haven't been able to have one. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's a, it's a good one. Good yeah. Time. And I and I'm glad. I'm glad the city, uh, you know, is stepping up. I, again, I don't know what the right amount is, but something. I I, I wish the last two years when they, when they needed it more, they, they always need it because they're always out there fundraising. Right. God bless. But you know, it's a good point because I don't know. It, it does set a precedent, and I don't know if. if the city is going to get more people now coming to them requesting money. Right. I don't. I don't know. The don't. the only the one argument you can make is we're getting you know great publicity for the city. It's the city of Downey Rosefold Association. Mm -hmm. You know it ties into the city. So you know if they don't do a good job, it, it does embarrass the city. So we're getting good goodwill yeah. and free press and so forth. So you can make an argument. It's a quasi city organization, although they're independently run and so right. forth. Other organizations, I think you're right. If they come to the city asking for money, yeah. that's going to be tough on there. I don't agree with the city giving money to private organizations on there. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit different. This is so mm -hmm. tied in. It's got our name in it, yeah. and it's got great people working on it. So. Yeah. Well, you know, we watch the city council meetings, so you don't have to because you don't <laughs> want to. Uh, but no, I, I enjoy recapping our meetings. Hopefully, we'll, we'll do this on a more consistent basis. And yeah. I, I kind of enjoy I, it. We didn't get into it, but when you look at public comment, I'm ashamed that this goes on in the city. Don't bring your kids to the city council meeting. There's a handful of people, terrible. They got signs with bad words on it. Uh, it's embarrassing. I feel sorry for the entire council. I feel sorry for anybody that has to go there because the the First Amendment does not give you the right to say the N word, the C word, the F word on their writing, and it's it's a shame. It's a shame. Well, I mean, it depends on who you ask. I because know. It, you know, that's another conversation because yeah. other cities don't tolerate it. Right. Downey, the way Downey's interpreted the law is that they have to right. allow them to be vulgar if they right. want to. And right. it, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's, but you're right, because it's a terrible experience now. Yeah. It's terrible to your mental health to hear those comments. So hateful. And my concern is one day it can get really ugly and something bad can happen. Yeah, and it's getting that way now. It's getting that way. So anyways, but we'll, we'll recap more for you on the city council meetings. We're going to do this on a regular basis. Maybe we'll get a more in depth. Uh, the council meetings, some of them, they're, they're long and uh, uh, strenuous on there. So we'll try to do that recap. And I kind of yeah. enjoy that. We talk about the highlights. And yeah. stay tuned. And the lowlights. And the lowlights. There's a lot of politics coming up in the next couple months. 
conceivably you have a whole new council in the next four months yeah. uh, and uh, we'll keep you informed so yeah. Eric good discussion absolutely great so thank you for listening to us on there first of all we couldn't do this without the uh, fi uh, the uh, financial backing of our sponsor uh, financial partners credit union they're a great community partner uh, they're involved in everything from the chamber to the rose flow to other things in our city uh, gosh I'm gonna get uh, get in trouble because I can't name the ten or different things but a great community partner uh, if next time you see somebody from financial partners make sure you say thank you because their goal, and that's why, is to get information out to our residents. That's what we're all about. So. Absolutely. Thank you for listening. Talking Downey with Mario. And Eric.